Welcome back, guys, to Wise Up TV, where today we are breaking down uh, the Pacific Championships as a whole. Did it live up to uh, the standards? Did it did it go another level up from last year? Uh, we're going to break that down for you right now, and just give you an overall review of the games, of the energy, the vibe, uh, the progress from a viewing perspective, uh, and all other elements around international rugby league and. Uh, before we do that, guys, hit that like and subscribe for more content here on Wires Up TV. Um, look, I think just from a viewing perspective, and um, actually we'll start off with a crowd's perspective. Uh, I did a video last year that was on why the 13,000 at the Pacific Championships final last year against the Kiwis and Kangaroos was diabolical, and it was. Uh, it wasn't a f good reflection of the international game, and I suppose many at that time were questioning why are we having a Pacific Championships in front of 13,000 people? Um, I think they've done a great job, and the ARLC, Peter Vlandis, Abdo, <clears throat> in their um, releasing of the NRL draw this year, mentioned that they were going to do a much bigger and better NRL, uh, sorry, Pacific Championships, and I think they did deliver that for the whole. I uh, will start off firstly with... Uh, the expansion of the, the competition obviously there was pacific uh cup and pacific bowl last year uh, but now we got to see a promotion relegation match which i thought added a bit more to it we can, we'll talk about why they you know the, the placement of that game being the last game of the the year was wrong but <clears throat> i love that element um i saw you know the adding in the additions of the world cup qualifiers for the women's games seeing some more Come all the way through making the World Cup, the women's team, and also being promoted to Pacific Cup next year. They had an amazing run. So it was great to see some storylines and follow some teams that had some, you know, some growth. Um, <clears throat> but to see it sold out, I think, was credit to them. We'll talk quickly about crowds. Obviously, unexpected by me, but 33,000 the first game against um, the Kangaroos and Tonga. That, that was a way to start the, the competition off. I thought they absolutely nailed that, and it was a great game. Again, a, a kind of close game, even though it was 18-0. The intensity was good. Both teams were a bit rusty at the time, but it was still good to see Tonga um, performing to a high clip. We got The previous year was Kangaroo Samoa, and I think that was a blowout. And so credit to Tonga for being that third nation that were really competitive, and I thought that kind of started everything off on the right foot. Um, And then... Uh, PNG, obviously, I think they've had a from a from a woman's perspective had a poor start. Jellaroos won that one pretty convincingly, and then we had some games in Fiji where Fiji played PNG, <clears throat> and I think Fiji women's played Cook Islands or, or something like that. Uh, Samoa women's played Tonga women's, and there were some good little matches. It was great to see the game in a different nation in Fiji. I think crowds got up to maybe five thousand. wasn't massive or five or seven thousand, but. At least we got to see actual work games played in Pacific nations, not just playing them in Australia or New Zealand, but actually getting to the grassroots of the game and to promoting the game at, at the core of where people are from. And that was cool to see in Fiji. So I thought it started off really well um, and, and saw some good matches in that first week. Then the second week, we moved kind of direction to Christchurch. Again, that game was sold out for about, a week or two i thought they did a wonderful job christchurch and hosting a kiwis kangaroos match um and we just yeah i thought that was great even though it was a seventeen thousand, that's the capacity it's still sold out um and based on um, ticket pricing i think to do that with the ticket pricing that we had obviously is different to the warriors who have gone with a really low uh and cheap ticket pricing model traditionally and so I, I suppose rugby league fans, if they've been to a Warriors game this year, are used to probably paying $10, $20 to get into a game, at Mount Smart at least. Um, but uh, the ticketing and pricing model was a lot more expensive, but to still see people pay and sell out a match at those prices obviously will benefit the NZRL, but also to see that the appetite is there, despite the price, people are willing to go out there. And I thought to get a blackout like it was 17000 in Christchurch speaks about uh you know the kiwis brand is growing it's improving obviously i talked about last year the thirteen thousand at uh hamilton stadium was poor and maybe looked the kiwis brand poorly but i think if you add in just quickly the dynasty clothing merchandise releases all the social media 
Uh, it did a wonderful job of promoting the brand by getting a new jersey design, which I thought was fantastic. Releasing an old heritage jersey, which I thought was absolutely awesome. We've been dying to see something like that um, and, and see just a variety of merchandise and to see people invested in it based on the quality of it. I thought Dynasty did a great job. Dynasty, I thought, did a great job for, I think, Tonga as well and maybe some more. There were some really good kits that people could put their money into and hopefully add a bit more money um, to the kit there for for nz and and other countries so i thought that was really really good um and yeah the game down there it was tight for majority i thought the kiwis did a pretty good job kangaroos ultimately their class broke in the end kiwis probably a bit rusty with kenny in his first start um but eventually you know it was a good good performance again i thought it was pretty solid um to sell out and then to move to um we moved to mount smart the following week i thought uh it's in the games in fiji as well were pretty good um, I think the match was at Samoa Women's versus Fiji Women's was epic. Oh, sorry, that was the following week, but um, there were some matches there where, um, yeah, it was, I think the Fiji got over Cook Islands, um, and PNG, I think, was still did really well the week before to kind of stay at the top. Um, and you could kind of tell, start to see the hierarchy of nations through the performances that the PNG was the top of that, that bowl level. Um and the Kiwis, the Kangaroos were obviously at the top, nailing that part. And I thought the Kiwi, the Jillaroos as well dominated uh, the, the Kiwi Ferns as well. So it was even though it was a, a loss for both days, I thought it was great the crowd wise. Um, moving to Mount Smart, I got a chance to go to Mount Smart and watch that game. Um, and that was the game where it started off the the, the curtain raiser was um, Samoa Women's versus Fiji Women, absolutely amazing game down to the wire, and Samoa qualifying for the World Cup. Um, and then, obviously, we had <clears throat> um, the Kiwis Tonga game, which was absolutely epic. Uh, I think we sold about 25, 26,000 um, seats. So it was near sellout. I don't think it quite got to sellout, but at least it was very maximum capacity type game. The Sea of Red was in full force. Um, it was absolutely awesome to see from a fan, even though I was there for the Kiwis. I thought it was mate. And the game... Yes, it was kind of really, you know, out of the blocks from Tonga. But then there was a comeback, which I thought was entertaining as well. So I thought that ultimately it was a good game to see um, a bit of entertainment. The crowd was entertained. It was a good crowd and great to see an upset. I mean, it's always cool for a neutral or even just anyone supporting rugby league to see Tonga do well. And their fans absolutely enjoyed it. And um, <clears throat> it's great for the game. <clears throat> They're moving obviously into the game against um, Kangaroos Tonga in the final. Another sellout, twenty eight thousand, absolutely awesome. You can see from the, I think for me personally, watching an international match, uh, Combank is a great stadium to have it at. I think the energy and vibe was definitely one that I would enjoy watching an international match at again. Um, <clears throat> so I thought that was really really good. And great to see, you know, obviously, Kangaroos won, but it was a good result for the game. We got to see four other matches, promotion and relegation. Um, you know, um, Samoa showing they're cut above PNG, and that's great for the women's game, that we get to see a strong Samoa next year. Um, PNG men's just a little bit short um, of the quality of New Zealand, but they're showing that they can bang with the, the top teams, at least for good periods. And the next step for them will be to try breakthrough into the the cup next next time. So there's a lot of positives there. Um, and again, four matches in one day. Now the the placement of them, yes, it should have been um, Kiwis Tonga in the last game. At least the night final would have been nice. Wait then, it was very anticlimactic when I was watching the Kiwis PNG. There was no one there anymore. <clears throat> so it's a shame to see the quality of talent that was on the field and not be respected by a good crowd. Um, and in all fairness, the Tonga, they just wanted to see their team and they are always going to leave, but would have loved to have seen that game at the end. But I suppose for TV ratings, that it was probably best to have it um, during that time slot. So that's understandable. Uh, that's who you're getting paid by and you want to make the best imprint on your TV, so you get paid for it. Um, but I thought it was absolutely wonderful showcase of the international game. Some really good matches. <clears throat> and Kiwis Tonga, uh, sorry, Kangaroos Tonga was, was awesome. And hopefully it rates well. I think from a TV's rating perspective, the ratings have been pretty good. Um, the Kangaroos games, you know, people saying that the Kangaroos are dead. Um, or, you know, as you can tell that there's still a good, decent amount of people that will watch the Kangaroos. So, uh, I mean, 
for me, the international game doesn't have to be better than Origin. Doesn't have to be better than the NRL comp. It just has to be a solid third. And I think we're trying to get. I think we're getting to a point now where the international game and at least the Pacific Championships, hopefully the World Cup in two years, is just a solid third in terms of the hierarchy. I think it will continue to grow, and I think that based, you know, the NRL, um, NRL and Origin. Um, have its fan bases and I think the international game should have a separate fan base I don't think that every NRL fan has to watch um, Pacific Championships don't they don't have to watch it they don't they can love their clubs they can love origin they don't have the, but I think it, uh, giving the international game an option to build its own fan base as what you saw with Tonga Tonga a lot of the Tongan fans they probably aren't Tonga uh, rugby league fans they're just fans uh, proud people of Tonga they're supporting they're not supporting the Tonga Rugby League team. They're supporting and representing Tonga. And I think that's the power of what International Rugby League does or can do is that it can expand the viewers, it can expand the fandom beyond just pure rugby league fans uh, into just people that are proud of their nation. And it kind of gives you a different crowd, a different um, perspective. But again, it just has to do what it does. And I think I'll give the credit, credit to Valandis and Abdo is that they've said, now this is a product we want to invest in. We want to put money into it. I mean, the fact they went and played games in PNG and Fiji, there's surely no money making from that. It's it's purely out of love or passion or or trying to invest in the future. You know, trying to buy. You know, they're playing these games over there to hopefully get some more Fijian players to get PNG, you know, to get the player pool bigger. PNG to build that nation up. So there's investment there, obviously with no monetary reward, but they can see that it's worth investing in. And like I said, it doesn't have to be the pinnacle for, and I'm sure it's not for a lot of the players or for people that watch it. But it can be a solid third. It can be a solid at the end of the, your calendar, or maybe at some point you get some mid-year games, where instead of you having like a million people watching an NRL game or a million, you know, three million watching an NRL, one million watching an NRL game, you might get eight hundred or seven hundred fifty k viewers watching an international game that's nice to have that nice bit of balance i don't think it needs to be better in origin or the pinnacle i think if it does it will do it naturally it will do it over time the the teams will get better the competition will grow that it will but don't, it doesn't have to be forced down people's throats that it's the pinnacle or that it's better i think it just needs to do what it does and i think what abdo and valani's have done just let it let it grow they've pr created the platform obviously the foundation now it's time to just let it spread its wings like tonga Tonga has just grown into this massive force uh, off the field just as much as on the field that we're seeing amazing atmospheres and games that we would never likely see. So it's allowing these teams to grow, allowing them to play games. Yes, we understand the scheduling. Um, does probably need a tweak where you can get the best players on the field um, for sure. Um, but if anything I've learned from international rugby league is it's, it's not dying. It just needs an opportunity to be allowed to grow. And I think that's, Credit to Abdo and Valandis, they've done that in a way. Um, <clears throat> now, next year, obviously, Ashes series over in, in the, for the Kangaroos over in England. I think that's great. Credit to England. I know we haven't talked about them, but they've two series wins over Tonga and Australia and, and Samoa. That'll be a good series to have. Now we get the opportunity to see Samoa, Tonga and New Zealand next year. I think will be a great little tournament. I think hopefully it, um, will generate just as much interest. I think, obviously, Australian viewers probably won't be as high as those fans that have been watching want to watch the Kangaroos, which is great. We want to expand the Kangaroos, and maybe they'll get a few more people watching it, the Ashes series, which I think will, will be awesome for the game. But it's a great opportunity to see how a, a Pacific Cup between Tonga, Samoa, and New Zealand can stack up from a monetary view, from a viewership view, and also from attendances. Can they sell out um, you know, f three, four games, four solid games where you know you <clears throat> where you can have a, a final at, at Eden Park or Mount Smart? There's a lot to probably weigh up. You know, Kangaroos and ARLC, I'm not sure if they're going to invest in it how they have. Maybe they will. Um, so their backing's there to support the NZRL, but a lot will weigh on the NZRL and, and the other nations, Tonga and Samoa. Can they run this tournament? I suppose they will get some support from the ARLC because that's they still want to invest in it. But 
can they organize events where it doesn't require the kangaroos? I think Tonga have shown that absolutely, yeah, we don't need any kangaroos fans. We can sail out of the stadium on our own. We don't need kangaroos or kiwis. kiwis. Uh, Samoa probably, they'll probably be looking and say, yeah, we can sell out any game we want. Tonga, Samoa, you could probably sell it out at Eden Park or somewhere like that, you know, somewhere central to their, their fan bases. Kiwis, you probably hope they can sell out other games as well. I think they're going to do that. Um, so it'd be great to see just those three three teams kind of how they can run a tournament on their own and, and the viability. Is it better than having the kangaroos in there? Is it better, you know, from a viewership standpoint, having three kind of evenly matched teams battling it out? So there'll be a lot to look at next year in terms of that. Um, the women's game, you know, seeing Samoa come through, the likes of a Fiji, Tonga, those other nations, how can they improve? You know, there's, so there's a lot of storylines, a lot of things to be built around. Um, so there's there's growth there as well. You just want to see it developed every year. You just want to see it shown. You want to give PNG another crack at a promotion relegation match against the Samoa or Tonga or New Zealand, whoever it is. You want to give them more opportunities. Uh, you want to see the Fiji men's do better because all of this stuff eventually is leading to, which is what will be in 2026, is a World Cup in Australia and in PNG. So if they can build on that again next year, then you're going to look at a World Cup where – you might have one of the best, highest ratings and highest attendances World Cup because you've done so well in building the Pacific Championships. So, again, it goes back to letting the game grow, giving it opportunities. Australia is going to be away in, in England. Can the nations that are that, that are playing in the Pacific Championships can they hold their own um, in terms of making money? I think there's that that's something exciting. I think we're all excited to see that Pacific Cup next year. And we just want to see more growth. Hopefully we see a few more of the star players able to play. Uh, hopefully that passion is growing and maybe those that aren't injured, so-called injured, uh, get to play. Um, but ultimately, um, I think I've been enjoying what I've we have. I mean, we come from a COVID area where, area where we had no internationals to now where we're actually trying to build something. It's great to see. And hopefully we build on it uh, moving forward. But guys, let me know what you think in the chat, uh, in the comments, sorry. Did you enjoy it? What what could improve, be improved on? What can we get rid of? Um, all those types of things. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'll try my best to get back to them. But otherwise, guys, enjoy your off-season. Take rest, and we'll catch you next time. Peace.